On January 18, 1961, a Manila police detective tragically took his own life after a domestic argument and disagreement with his family. Prior to that, he also killed his daughter and son-in-law and seriously injured his wife before ending his own life. Let's dive into the story on House on Zapote Street. A police detective in Manila tragically took his own life with the same revolver he had previously used to shoot and injure his wife. This devastating act occurred after an argument with his daughter and son-in-law. He then committed suicide by shooting himself in the heat at their luxurious mansion in Makati, Rizal. Pablo Cabading, 48 years old, a plainclothes officer who was assigned to the Criminal Investigation Laboratory of the Manila Police Department, was the one who ran him up. To mediate a disagreement between his family members, he called all three of them to his room on the second floor of their extravagantly furnished home in Makati, 1074 Zapote Street. In the heat of the moment, he shot each of them one after the other, and then he put the muzzle of his 45 caliber handgun to his right temple and shot himself to death, ending the argument. His head was completely penetrated by the 45 caliber bullet. These people were his victims. One, Mrs. Asuncion Cabading, 45 years old, his wife, who was shot numerous times and suffered multiple wounds. Two, Mrs. Cabada, as of the close of business the other night, was suffering from a life-threatening illness at the Philippine General Hospital. She received seven wounds, two in her left shoulder, two in both feet, and one in her body. Five of her wounds were in her feet. She was rushed to the operation room after the accident. Two, Mrs. Lydia Cabading Kitangon, who is his only daughter and is a physician by trade and is 24 years old. Three, Leonardo Kitangon, 36 years old, is Lydia's spouse. He is a professor at the University of Santo Tomas College of Medicine. A secluded area of the room served as the location of Quintangon and Lydia's final moments together before passing away. Bullet holes may be found all over their bodies. Kabading experienced a fall and landed on his back on a bed. On the floor, between Quintangon and Lydia's feet, a visibly distressed Mrs. Kabading was discovered writhing in anguish. She was transported to the PGH by police officers from Makati. The murder weapon, which turned out to be Kabading's service pistol, was discovered on the ground close to where Kabading was standing. On the upper level of their recently built home, on the second floor, a room that had been covered in blood contained all four victims. The detectives from the police department were unable to enter the room without first breaking the lock on the door. They stated that the door of the chamber could only be opened from the inside. During the shooting incident, there were a total of four other people present in the home. Nonilo Katangon, 27, a lawyer of 3996, Dangal, Sta Mesa, brother of Leonardo, Eduardo Cabading, 8, adoptive son of the Cabadings, Normalinda Gapuz, 15, and Corazon Verzosa, 12, housemaids were the victims, Eduardo Cabading, 8, adopted son of the Cabadings. According to Gapuz, the maid saw a police officer from Makati walking by and approached him for assistance. According to Nonilo, he was in the house during the rampage. Nevertheless, he became terrified and ran out of the house to notify the police. According to him, Kabading had asked him to come to their residence to talk about something important. According to Nonilo, as soon as Kabading saw him enter the house, he immediately started a lively conversation with him. After a few minutes, Kabading gave him instructions to wait below, since the family was going to talk about something upstairs. After waiting another five minutes, Nonilo reported hearing a series of gunshots. Kabading may have became irate because their children refused to stay with them, according to what Nonilo told the police officers. He stated that the Kintangons desired to live apart from one another. Only in October of 1960 did Quintangon and Lydia decide to tie the knot. The Kabadings only had one child, and that was Lydia. After hearing about the incident, Rodrigo Narvaez, age 18, who lives at 176 Arellano Avenue and is Quintangon's cousin, hurried over to the residence. He claimed that Kabading had mentioned to him at some point in the past that it was Kabading's hope that Lydia would not live apart from them. According to Narvaez, he discovered that Kabading treated Quintangon with disdain because he married Kabading's daughter, 
without obtaining their permission first. Nonilo reported to the detectives of the Makati police station that on Sunday, Lydia and Quintangon traveled for the city of Marogondon in Cavite without obtaining their father's consent. According to him, Kabading arrived to his home in Stamesa carrying a Thompson submachine gun just before noon on Sunday. He was seeking for Quintangon and Lydia. He said he was hunting for them. According to Nonilo, Kabading was informed by him that the pair was still in Cavite. According to Nonilo, the couple who stayed in his home the night before received a phone call from Kabading in the morning, informing them that Mrs. Kabading was very ill. Kabading had slept in Nonilo's home the night before. Concerned, Nonilo reported that the couple drove to their residence in Makati, but much to their astonishment, they discovered that Mrs. Kabading was in good health. According to Nonilo, Kabading then gave him a call and instructed him to accompany him to his residence so that they could discuss something important. According to Nonilo, Kabading instructed him to wait downstairs after he arrived at their home because he wanted to speak with their children in the upstairs bedroom. Nonilo reported hearing gunshots a few minutes after the initial incident. The policeman stated that he attempted to enter the home through the front entrance, but a police officer volunteered to enter the home through the back door. He looked in through a window, but saw no one inside the sala when he did so. He reached his hand inside, opened the front door, and walked in at the exact same time that the police officer entered from the kitchen. As they inched their way up the stairs, they overheard Lydia wailing in her room. They attempted to open the door, but it appeared to be jammed from the inside. Push it, push it, a woman's voice cried. The officer gave the door a forceful shove, and whatever had been preventing it gave way. He struggled to find the light switch and then turned it on. Both he and Jean flinched in response to what they saw as soon as they stepped inside. Blood was splattered all over the interior of the room. Mrs. Cabotting was located on the floor, obstructing the doorway. She had been shot in the stomach as well as the chest, but she was still alive. The officer attempted to get a statement from her, but all she could say was, My hand, my hand, it hurts. She was positioned so that she was lying across the legs of her daughter, who was positioned so that she was resting on top of her husband. Lydia still had an armful of clothing clenched in her fist, and Leonardo was holding a clothes hanger. Both he and she had been shot through the chest, but he had been hit in the breast. They had both passed away at the same time. The police had a hunch that the father got his when he realized that continuing to have his children live with him would be pointless. The preliminary investigation revealed that Mrs. Cabading had either stopped her husband from shooting the young couple or attempted to hide them from her husband's gunfire. The investigators believe that Lydia was protecting both herself and her husband when they were struck by the initial salvo of shots. It appears that Cabading shot Lydia when she was covering her husband, and Mrs. Cabading when she attempted to shield Lydia based on the positions of the bodies, and Mrs. Cabading's later hospital testimony. The fact that the man turned the gun on himself after firing the first shot, which must have struck the right side of the head, is proof of his extraordinary strength and might, as his hands sank to his chest as he appeared to be able to shoot himself again. The gun, a 45 caliber handgun, must have flown from his grasp during the intense spasm of suffering. It was discovered near Mrs. Cabading's feet at the foot of the bed. The mayor of Makati, Maximo Estrella, along with several homicide detectives from Makati, conducted further investigations into the matter. They were curious about finding out the real motive behind the murder. The investigators were looking into why the gun was found in a location so far away from Cabading. This is the end of this video. Do well to drop your comments, give us a like and subscribe to this channel.